All right, it's a great good morning to you and welcome to Sports on AM. My name is George Adi Jr. And definitely a lot to talk about this morning. I know some Chelsea fans are looking forward to that game against Barcelona. We'll get into that and also talk about your very difficult fixtures that you've got, uh, you know, ending of January and in February. But we have to start first here in the country. And Ghana FA boss, Kwesi Nyantichi, has admitted it will take at least two years to realign the Premier League calendar for the European calendar. Now, litigation and internal troubles has ensured the current football calendar is two years back. And Ghana need to halt next season's league at a point to make way for the World Cup. Kwesi Nyantechi is worried, but can't see the problem solved anytime soon. We tried it. We tried it about eight, seven seasons ago, and it worked. Then internal wrangling and litigation led to some tempering with the, with the, with the league schedules. People took the FA to court, and that delayed the start of the league. And that is what has brought us where we are now. Now we're struggling to realign again. It might take us one or two more years to realign. But I think that at the end of the day, it is better for us to align with the European calendar. So when it's time for players to move to Europe or elsewhere, it's easier and doesn't affect the team and doesn't affect the league as a whole. It also uh, uh, affords the FA the advantage of gaining easy access to players for releases to national team uh, call-ups. Away from that, then, Egyptian Mohamed Salah has been voted BBC African Footballer of the Year for 2017. Now, following a record number of votes, the Liverpool star won ahead of Gabon's Per Merrick Aubameyang, Guinea's Nabi Keita and Sadio Mane of Senegal. Of course, Nigeria's Victor Moses. Salah, the Premier League's top scorer, is actually leading now with 13 goals and has enjoyed a stellar year for both club and country. Now, before we hear from Salah, though, these are the full steps he's followed. Checking that list, um, very refreshing, I think, to see Michael Ayson, uh, someone, John and Andre, you all part of the winners of the BBC African Footballer of the Year. But it's now time to hear from Mohamed Salah, whose award was presented to him by, maybe I should say, the frustrated German trainer, Jürgen Klopp. Oh, yes, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, Thank you. my friend. Well deserved. Thank you. Well deserved. It's a fantastic prize for pretty good player to be honest. Thank you. <laughs> well, I mean, what does it feel like winning this award? Yeah, I'm very happy to win this award. You know, it's a special feeling for me and uh, I would like to win it also next year. <laughs> <laughs> There's always a bunch of people behind that helped to get you to this place. Who would you like to thank? I have to thank everyone, my teammates, my, the people I work with and you know, I'm very happy here in the club. I, I had a very good start with the team and also the manager <laughs> helped me to, of course, to be yes, in that team. Yeah, yeah. So also I had a last, last, year, last season, I had a good season also with Rome. So I have to thank my teammates and my teammates in the national team also. So. Also, the people I work is yeah, very professional, and I'm happy with them. So I will imagine the jury is out on this. Um, some of you feel that, well, Sadio Mane played better. Well, some even think that under the year in review, Per Merrick Aubameyang did absolutely fantastic. Or maybe Victor Moses even had a shot in this, but well, um, that's how it happens. Often when you have a northern or a player from Northern Africa part of this, they get huge votes. And it's, it's just the same. If you have a Nigerian player in there, you get a lot of votes because of um, just the population and how it goes. But we can easily say that Mohamed Salah has done well at least this season. And legend Steph Nikoku and Gabriel Zakwani insist Mohamed Salah is not just a fan favorite but deserves the award. 
And that maturity that uh, wasn't there when he first came to Chelsea a few years ago. He's gone to Italian football, had a couple of fantastic years there, um, and obviously done great things with the national uh, uh, side as well. So that maturity has turned him into what is now one of the best attackers in world football. Um, he's playing at the highest level now. He's shown he can do it at the highest level, and he's basically carried them through the World Cup. So for me, I think he'll definitely step up to the plate. All right, so there was no Ghanaian definitely in the running for the BBC African Football of the Year award. And there will be no Ghanaian as well in the running for the top half award. Yes, the Confederation of African Football will reveal the final three-man shortlist for the 2017 African Footballer of the Year award in Ghana next week. So a press conference will be held at the Kempinski Hotel in Accra on Monday, 18th December at 10 a.m. to reveal the names of the players who have made the final shot list. Cup presidents Ahmad Ahmad and other leading members of the continent's football governing body will attend the event along with new sponsors of the awards ceremony. Of course, uh, 11 players were shortlisted for the flagship award for African football last month and the number will be pruned down to three. So Bertrand Traoré of Burkina Faso, Uganda goalkeeper Dennis Onyango, Morocco's Karim El Hamadi, Senegal's duo of Keita Baldi and Sadio Mani were amongst those in the 10-man shot list. Cuff awards to come later here in Accra, but in the Champions League, players are still vying for awards and have to play well to at least give yourself a chance of winning the Ballon d'Or or winning FIFA's best player, knowing very well that the World Cup is in next year. So let's talk about the Champions League. And the flagship fixture for the last 16 should be Chelsea versus Barcelona. And the last 16 tie against the La Liga Giants promises to provide the Blues with a stand test. But the manager, Antonio Conte, says that their reaction must be positive. Antonio Conte insists that Chelsea must embrace the challenge of being handed a daunting Champions League tie against Barcelona. Our reaction must be, uh, must be positive. And, uh, as you know very well, and uh, when you are in, uh, in this stage, uh, you must be ready to, to face every team. And in this case, uh, you must be ready to, to face uh, Barcelona. How aware are you of the some of the epic battles Chelsea and Barcelona have had in the past in the Champions League. Yeah, but it's the past. Uh, it's the past. And, uh, now the present uh, uh, is another story. Yeah, it's totally different. It's impossible to see an advantage to, to play at home or the, the first game or at the way. I think that when, when you play with the Barcelona, you must put 120%. Uh, at home, at the way, if uh, you want uh, uh, to up to to go to the next round. Well, it's just one for comfort in the heart. Still, Chelsea fans will be very worried about this. Are they worried? Maybe they are not too worried. There's something to get worried about. I'll be telling you quickly. But let's quickly have a look at the Champions League fixtures, just to remind you of what we saw uh, yesterday in that draw. And Juventus is up against Tottenham Hotspur. Now that's an interesting game. We have Basel up against Manchester City. FC Porto will play Liverpool. The Sevilla up against Manchester United. Real Madrid up against Paris Saint-Germain. If there was no Chelsea Barcelona, we will have been, you know, discussing that game. Between between Madrid and Paris Saint-Germain. Shakhtar Donetsk up against AS Roma. We have Chelsea up against Barcelona and Bayern Munich will be up against Besiktas. But I will have to talk about Chelsea very shortly before we get into the English Premier League and look forward to what uh, there is to later tonight. And Chelsea, aside these daunting fixtures, you know, yes, we know that this is going to be a very difficult game. Uh, somehow they're falling on the bad side of the lack of a draw and again of the English Premier League fixtures. Let's have a look right now at what Chelsea will be facing before they play Barcelona. This is what happens then. So we start with um, what goes on with Chelsea. That's going to be somewhere uh, ending in January. Chelsea will have to play West Brom at home. And right after that, they play Barcelona. After the Barcelona game, they go away to Manchester United and after playing away to Manchester United, they play away to Manchester City. There's Crystal Palace, and they go away to Barcelona. So this is actually what the Chelsea fans have been, have been discussing you know, at this point. To think that you have to play Manchester United away, play Man City away, after you have played Barcelona. Because there's West Brom, there's Barcelona, there's Manchester United away, Manchester City away. 
uh, before you think about playing Barcelona again, well, it's an interesting one. And I'm sure most of the Chelsea fans are getting into this to see how it's going to be working out. So sad times, though. Uh, often we don't talk too much about the Europa League, but we know that um, Arsenal will have to get the act if they want to go all the way to win that. The likes of Atletico Madrid also looking into that. So let's talk about the English Premier League shortly right now. And there are games to come tonight. Headlining that should be Chelsea Huddlesfield. And Huddlesfield FC head coach David Wagner is very pleased with his team's progress so far and is expecting a tough encounter when the reigning champions can visiting tonight. It's been a long wait for Steve Mounier, no goals since the opening day of the season. But Huddersfield's record signing returned to the side against Brighton at the weekend and helped Huddersfield end their four-game losing streak. His manager said he always knew his striker would come good. We've seen after the pre-season and the first games he played for us in this season that we've signed a, a proper young, talented uh, hungry number nine where we were and we are still very happy that he is part of our squad. Now he is back on his uh, best fitness level and this helps him to show all the qualities he has. Huddersfield's home form has been the key to their solid start to the season but it's the reigning champions up next and Wagner is full of admiration for Antonio Conte's side. Happy to host them and we are very excited about what is in front of us. Uh, Huddersfield Town plays against Chelsea in the Premier League. Uh, this uh, stays for itself. And uh, to play this at home in, in the John Smith Stadium with our supporters under floodlights, it will be exciting uh, evening, night for all of us. And hopefully we can make it uh, into a successful night for us as well. This is our aim, even if we know that this is maybe one of the biggest tasks we, 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 we can have. Plenty of compliments then for Chelsea from Wagner, but how is he actually planning to cause a shock? What we can expect is that we make it as uncomfortable as we've done it in all the home games with our supporters uh, against this opponent, and this is exactly what we would like to do, and then we will see what we can get out of this game. Huddersfield have already proved that they can compete in the Premier League, especially at home. And Wagner will be hoping he can give the fans even more to cheer about when Chelsea come to town. All right, you don't need a reminder that Manchester City are leading the pack right now in the English Premier League with 11 points. That's a solid lead going into the very busy December, obviously we know. Uh, a major characteristic though of the English Premier League. So let's have a look at the fixtures now. There are games on today and tomorrow. So we start with Chelsea up against Huddersfield. Now, Chelsea fans will not know whether to laugh or cry, truly, because they've lost against teams um, that didn't have any power or any zeal about them. West Ham United beat Chelsea, Crystal Palace beat Chelsea. So Chelsea, Huddersfield away should be a big game. Quick reminder, Huddersfield beat Manchester United at home and frustrated Manchester City. So it could be a dramatic night to come. Uh, also today we have Burnley up against Stoke City, Crystal Palace up against Watford. And tomorrow we'll see West Ham United up against Arsenal. They play at home, she'll be very fired. We've got Swansea up against Man City. There's Manchester United up against Bournemouth. Will Romelu Lukaku score? Will he start? There are many concerns right now, issues about whether Jose Moreno should drop Lukaku at this point or not. There'll be Liverpool, West Brom. There will be Tottenham, Hotspurs, Brighton. And these are the games we'll be looking forward to uh, in the English Premier League tonight and tomorrow. All right, so that's it for sports here on the AM show. We came to you from digital address 0993341. And you can go on to your Google Play Store to download this and get us going. There's more coming up on the AM show. My name is George Adi Jr. Thank you very much uh, for watching and good morning.